in the draw against Brian Castaño. They treated us to a memorable matchup here in San Antonio. I turn over the floor to still holding three of his titles, uh, Jermel Charlo. Jermel Charlo went out. He fought his heart out as he always does, representing his hometown of Houston, Texas. If the media has any questions for Jermel, but Jermel, I want to open up the floor to you. How are you feeling after the draw that you had against Brian Castaño with all four belts on the line? Well, I mean, you know, when you, you know, not a lot of people get an opportunity to fight for an uh, undisputed championship in boxing. So this is an opportunity for me. I'm very thankful for it. Um, I didn't pull off the, the win or the knockout like y'all usually see me. So I guess that's kind of like how, it, you know, when you when you when you look at a lot of judges, they probably judge the fight off of like how the fact that Jamil Charlo always coming forward. He really never boxes. He always knocking everybody Chuck out. King he hitting exposes hard. everything. Has just donated four dollars and ninety nine cents. You're the man. Do you think Charlo really wants the rematch? I remember him saying he wanted to do Andre Ward and leave boxing after undisputed. Didn't win it, you know, as fair, like as. You know, I'm gonna enter the, the super chats do. after the press conference. Yeah, but I feel good. You know, I'm happy. I'm um, I, I'm I'm I, I gotta go back over my performance and look at it. Uh, I don't really know. You know, I just know I was just in a fight. You know, a dog fight. I had a hurting him all over the ring. He did. He did stop coming. You know, I was listening to my twin brother. I was listening to Derry James, Juan Guzman, my whole team, Kevin, Titus. I was just. I, I'm just so uh. My lady was yelling. I hear so much. I, you know, I was so attentive to everything. I'm, 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 I'm just, uh, you know, I'm thankful for it. Like this is crazy. You know, I get an opportunity to you know, make some millions of dollars and then come back and I do it again. I don't care. We're thankful for what the performance that you gave tonight. You're with mm -hmm. alongside Derek James. If you have questions for Jermel Charlo, I think Mike, you got one. Crystal Frost has the microphone. Wait until it gets to you. Hey, Jermel. Congrats yeah. on hell of a fight. Mm -hmm. It was one of the best fights of the year, in my opinion, and. You know, it was a dog fight, like you said. But, you know, Derek did tell you you needed a knockout late in the fight. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you look, you're just in a big fight, so you don't know how it was scored. But do you feel like maybe the draw was fair? or? Um, no, nah, I actually feel like I don't know how they came out with, uh, you know, honestly, I think that, you know, it was a closer fight than it seems. If somebody had it like 117, 111. I do feel that I won a little bit more rounds than he did. 117, 111 was a, kind of a large range. Um, but I do feel that there's no way possible that you could just like, oh, 114, 114, you know what I'm saying? So um, not to not to take anything away from boy Brian Costano did, but I feel like I pushed a lot harder tonight than he did. You know, he was, you know, he wasn't running in there trying to be the Brian Costano he was. I took him out of his game plan. If they really knew who Brian Costano was and how he actually fights and threw 1,100 punches um, from how I did it, I don't think that, you know, I think I did a better performance than a lot of people that fought him. Uh, I, I didn't see, you know, Ares Lardy wobbling all over the ring. I didn't see Tejera do anything like that. Um, I felt like I did way better than, you know. I mean, Derek told me in the ninth round, you know, like I was, hey, you got to knock him out. Fuck what you talking about? <laughs> <It's time> to, <laughs> what are you talking about? Knock him out? I'm beating his ass. But then I'm like, oh, you know, I got to think about it. I'm in the state of Texas. They, the judging, they, you know, they had first judges, I guess. They was from all over the place. Referee was Pan Panama, you know. I wish I would have gotten somebody. I don't know, bro. You know, it's cool with a guy with the, the eyes that look all crazy and shit. He be really into that shit. Like, you know. I, but the, yeah, he got he's known for that. He's he's okay with it. Um, shout out to him. <laughs> he okay with. It. He knows that he be woo. <laughs> you know he let the he, the judges know like that was a good shot. Like I blocked a lot of shots that people probably thought I got hit with. A lot of shots slid off. Um, I was I was it was a stunning fight. Yeah. You know you've said it many times in the past that like you needed to fight someone better to show everyone what you really have. And I think it's clear now that Brian Castaño is by far the best guy you've ever fought. Mm -hmm. uh, you know he, he was in control for a lot of the early part of the fight. Obviously, you dug down deep and landed those big shots in round 10 to turn the tide. But how much better do you think you can become now that you fought someone like this? Well, let, let me, I don't think he was the best fight he ever fought. Uh, Derek, that, go ahead. Even though you, wasn't, you didn't ask me a question, I don't think he was the best fight he ever fought. He only had... Who's better than him? He only had his way when he... Uh, Jamel, wait, 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 wait. He only had his way when Jamel stayed in one spot on the ropes and, tried, and was doing this. Other than that, he was—he really wasn't. He's not the best fight he ever fought. I think Tony Harris was probably better than him. 
Tony what? Harrison did better than Brian Castaño? Yeah, yeah. yeah, listen, man, what you talk? He only, the shots he was throwing, he was not landing those punches. Listen. That guy, I like Derrick James, listen, but he kind of tripping. He was not landing those shots. For sure. And he only tried to win the last round. Go ahead. Tony Harrison will be there. What you talking about? Yeah. Put like this. Bro, Castanio fighting Spurs. <laughs> he fought his Spurs tonight. He fought his Spurs tonight. He didn't, he didn't fight the All right, next, next question. I feel next like question. he tried to win the end of the round every, every round, though. He tried to steal the end of the round. Every we got Keith. Keith. Jamel, you obviously hurt him pretty badly in the 10th round. How close did you feel? That you only were? the 10th? <laughs> well, well that, that was the most obvious time. The uh, obvious? The second? Or when, like... I feel like I heard him more than three times, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I heard, I seen him, his legs wobble a few times. Well, go ahead, go ahead, my bad. Um, how close did you feel you were to getting him out of there at that point? And did you feel he was still hurt in the beginning of the 11th round? Of course, that's what I'm saying. So, he, if, you know, I went into the 10th round. He was, you know, like belligerent all over the ring, you know, like barely could stand up. I don't know. Um, I, I just couldn't get him out of there. You know what I'm saying? The dude was tough. He was tough as fuck. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's what I wanted. I wanted a warrior. I fought, I faced a warrior, and I knew what I was going to get in there with. Undefeated fighter? Come on. This is not something that uh, everybody looking at it like, you know, shit, I fought a hard fight, a hard fighter. Um, so for for anybody that don't really know the skills of Jamil Charlotte, maybe y'all can go back over and add Jamil Charlotte to your pound for pound list. Or fuck you, really. <laughs> You're on our pound for pound list, but... I mean, um, are you boxing scene, correct? Yes. Okay. You're seventh on the, on the list. But anyway. Um, I'm seven on your list. Thank you for that. You're welcome, man. <laughs> well earned, obviously. Um, <laughs> you, uh, people are going to want to see this rematch, obviously. You're, I'm sure you're well aware of that. I know the fight just ended. But what do you mean by your that? thoughts on fighting fight him again fight because it was an entertaining fight as well. Was it? Thank you. Um, of course. Um, that's that's what we're made for. Donated two dollars uh, I mean, we're made to be warriors. Dog. This, this is, uh, you know, get better. This is a get better moment. Um, I could recite everything that happened in there in that fight, and um, I, I think that I, would, of course, would take a, a a rematch. I don't know when, but I would love to get in there and fight him again. Questions for Jamel Charlo? Raise your hand. What's, what's up? up? Punch drunk. What's good? What's good? Oh. Punch drunk. I like you. I know all about you. <laughs> <laughs> I pay attention to you, man. Shout out to the people. Thanks, my brother. Thank, thank, thanks for the performance today. Um. Mm -hmm. Your, your success and your vulnerability came on the ropes. You know, I, I have you winning 116, 112 because you mixed the punches. You had your one and twos. You controlled the three-minute intervals of each round. Um, but what do you feel what, what do you feel you could do next, Martin next has fight just if you do donated rematch? $9.99. Um, you know, that's why I got a, a coach that loves to sit at home in his big game room and just watch fights and replay them back to back to back. <laughs> He'll be calling me all day, so I'm happy about that. But... Um, just, just off of my mental, I think I could have easily just, you know, been a little bit more active. You know, I stay, I stay kind of imposed, just waiting on him to see what he, his move was going to be. Um, took, took, took him out of his game plan. Like I said, if he would have tried to come in there, you see, he got hurt at the beginning off of the fact that he tried to throw like a, a, a combination. I think like maybe four or five punches at one time and it. That's when he got caught. Um, but if he would have tried that again, I would have did the same exact thing. So I, I don't think he would have ended up. You know that fight would have ended it earlier, if, but he must have regrouped, and his team probably like, "Hey, you forgot you're fighting one of the strongest fighters in the division." So, um, you know, hey, like I said, I I'm used to knocking guys out, you know. And tonight I did not get a knockout. Tonight I did not even get the win. I got a draw. That shit is weird, right? I had never got a draw. I, I hear I see people getting draws and shit, but that's what come with this boxing game. You know what I'm saying? I'm 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 back at it. It's not gonna change nothing. Yeah. Got a question. Mm -hmm. Jermel, first of all, congratulations. Wonderful mm -hmm. performance and a very entertaining fight. You gave your reaction to when Derek James told you to get the knockout. I guess my question is for Derek. Uh, what was the reasoning or just the thought process in that moment? Obviously, being ringside, we didn't hear it on the telecast, but you know, we did find out that that was said. What was you know, just the reason behind that? Well, the reason why I said it was because you had to find some reason to inspire the fighter, even though... Uh, if you looked up at the scorecards, at the judges, the unofficial judging, they had him down. And so I said, listen, we need to pick it up to go out there and get it. And that's really what he did. So that's that's really what made me do it was because I, I saw it up there and, and Joe was telling me about it, the cut man was telling me about it, they had him down. So that's why I was like, we need to pick it up. I mean, and he won the 10th and the 11th. 
He heard him. He, he heard him several times. I was out there on twelve. <laughs> but but in the twelfth, you. I, I was he, a little bit on that. Like yeah, 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 yeah. You let him off the hook. I, I should have busted that. You should have put the put the. I told you to step on the gas. We need a knockout. So you should put you know, put put it on. You know, put the feet on the pedal to the metal, man. We got two more questions for Jermel Charlo. Two more questions. Eric, uh, you just touched on it right there. Uh, Jermel, when you had him out in the, in the 10th and 11th, it, it looked like you were trying to do the same setup that got him hurt in the first place. But do, do you feel like you should have emptied the clip there when you had him hurt, or were you, were you just trying to, to get the same setup again? I like this guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, you know, I, 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 I did. I did. I, I, I know in boxing, you know, from so many years of, you know, being taught, the game that you don't, you know, you don't rush knockouts. You know, like if you go in there and you just, you know, I kind of learned that in the Tony Harrison second fight. Um, you know, I didn't, I wasn't gonna get tired. You know, like I wasn't, and I still feel good. I could have get did more, but you know, when you up there, dog, it's not the same as it was just talking about it. You know what I'm saying? It's a little bit different. You know, and then reactions and things are moving way, way different and slower and faster. So it's kind of like I should have unloaded the clip. Fuck, I should have just let that shit go. Like, but. Fuck, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I should have. I had a long clip. <laughs> One more question for Jermel Charlo, and then we'll let him go ahead and get some rest, be with his lovely family. He gave us a fantastic performance tonight. Always a pleasure to see you do your thing. One more question. Steve Graham, KOR Art of Sports. Uh, congratulations, man, on a great uh, fight. Was there something wrong with your, your right hand? It seemed like kind of a, maybe, I don't know if you're, I don't know, like a bone was protruding from your, your right hand a little, or your right shoulder a little bit, and um, I kind of noticed you weren't throwing it too much. Yeah, I, I had a prior injury, but, you know, I don't care about those excuses. You know, I try to fight through these things, um, but I, I was good. You know what I'm saying? Um, a lot of people won't, I probably won't talk about it. You know, that's probably something that you won't hear. For, so thank you for asking that question. How dare you? To my attention. But, Count Drago yeah, has um, just donated $2. You, warrior, bro, you, you sicken you, me. You gotta feed your family. Both you make no mandatories both anything. run it back. So you got to get in there and you got to fight and face what you face. And, and so, yeah, um, I've been dealing with certain things throughout this whole time of me boxing. Well, not a whole time, but, you know, a few years, you know, we deal with this. So um, I'm, I'm, it's nothing going to change. Just quickly, talk about, I mean, you got a draw, but you seem very happy. You seem very content with yourself. I mean, you're a warrior. You were just in there with another warrior. Talk about just that feeling of sharing that that uh, that ring with him and, and, you know, still going home with three belts, I'm at, belts. I'm at peace with my with myself, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I love boxing, and this is a dope-ass sport, and it's not a lot of people that could just jump in the ring. I don't know how many people, how many of y'all even lace gloves up, but if you get in there and you do a whole training camp, I trained for like 14 weeks. I did, I went hard, you know what I'm saying? And so for me to pull off a performance like that, I thought I'd had his ass knocked out. I did knock his ass out, but I should have won the fight. I do believe I won the fight. I don't believe that it was that close, um, and I don't believe it was so far spread margin, but I do believe I did pull that win off a of victory. And um, I should be undisputed right now. I'm not down at all. I could go turn the fuck up right now. My team and my Houston people, we all, we excited this bitch. You know what I'm saying? My family here, like they said, and um, the sky's the limit for me. I'm not gonna turn down at all. I'm happy, I'm excited. My coach next to me and you know, what's, you know, everything is good. You know, my mom, you be K in this bitch. Like we, we, we turned up. Um, Hey, you know, punch, punch in here. Jermel, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Congratulations on a fantastic performance. We can't wait to see the rematch uh, whenever and, it happens. And, 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 and I want to and I want to say one good thing that y'all y'all probably don't realize. You know, um, my one of my, my my second coach, he came all the way down. I know my dog Earl Spence getting ready for a major fight against Manny, Manny Pacquiao, and that's a big fight coming up. And I can't wait to he you know get in the ring and do his thing. But my thanks, shout out to Guzman. You know, Juan Guzman. You know. He did it. He did a terrific job holding it down for me while I was in Houston, Houston, Texas. Um, shout out to me in the front row, bro. Ex champion, baby. Yeah. You know, and and, and shout out to Derrick James and them collaboration and the making this really make this matter happen and make tonight a fantastic, terrific night for me. Jamel Charlo, everybody, give a round of applause. Houston's finest, along with Derrick James. All right, let's talk for a minute. I'm going to turn this off. Take a time out, like, uh, subscribe. You know, I've never been with the um, uh, group think. You know what that is? Like people, how can I say? Basically, perfect situation. Wilder Fury, for example, 
if you're not Team Fury, then you're Team Wilder. If you're not Team Wilder, you're Team Fury. So once again, I've been doing this on YouTube for about a good decade now. And basically, you guys have been brainwashed. A lot of you guys who actually watch all of the YouTube channels, not all of you, but a lot of you guys have been brainwashed because you think, okay, here's a, here, 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 here's a saying that I was told a long time ago. A liar thinks that everyone's a liar. A thief thinks that everyone steals. So truth be told, if a fighter wins or if a fighter loses, nothing changes on my channel. Nothing changes with my persona or my reputation. So I told all of you that I was into the fight and I got a kid upstairs. But I feel that Charlo needed those last four rounds to win the fight. I missed about a round or so. What's so hard about that? But the problem is, because of the way these people handle their YouTube channels, you're not used to people telling you that they're wrong. I told you, I'm going to go back and watch the fight. Like I always do. So, I'm cool with the draw. Because from what I saw, to me on my card, Charlo needed to win those last four rounds. One thing for sure is Castaño did not win. Yeah, round nine. I didn't see round nine. Castaño didn't win round 12, in my opinion. Charlo was getting beat up. But one thing I can't stand is how like people act like girls. I'm not saying Castaño won. No, I'm not. Like People be like, oh, well, you know, you must got an agenda. Like, yo, did y'all not, for the long-time viewers, no matter if somebody wins or loses, I still win. If you want me to get cocky, I'm still going to get views. I don't give a fuck about these boxes for real, for real. Like, I got to tear I gotta tear Tyson Fury a new asshole in a couple of days. When I do my long video on him, I got a whole 30-minute video on his bullshit where I pulled that old Klitschko press conferences, all that shit. So, I understand like how people are going to say Castaño got robbed. They're not going to say Charlo got robbed. Charlo was getting touched up. But I look at it like this. You didn't, it wasn't supposed to be an easy fight. It wasn't supposed to be an easy fight. In your opinion, he won. You see what I'm saying? Uh, one thing I've never done... And I do admit, females do this. I don't argue with people's opinion. Now, if we homies, we're going back and forth. Like, what, motherfucker? You watched the wrong fight. You's a dickhead, all that type of shit. But me talking to you guys, I don't really give a fuck. I'm not going to be like, damn, Charlo lost. How am I going to spin this shit? Because he's black. Oh, shit. Um, yeah, well, that's not me. I've never been like that. It's not me. But... I'm going to say that, listen, Charlo, in my opinion, he needed those last four rounds. I got to go back and I got to watch those last four rounds again. And that may change it. But as it stands right now, that shit was a draw to me. Your channel has changed so much. I used to like watching you. You can count me. That's one less subscriber on your channel, Charlo Laws. Okay, ho, get out. And also, you know I can check. When people do stuff like that, they were never subscribed to the channel. Like, And also, I hate when people announce that they're going to leave. And leave me a long-ass sentence. Just leave. Ew. See what I'm saying? Acting like ladies. Like, I'm going to be like, no, bro, please. Subscribe. Don't leave. So anyway, let's get down to business. Um, Let's go look at the rankings here. So here is my theory. Here's what I think the fighters should do. Al Heyman and Samson, the managers and advisors of both Charlo and Castaño, need to get on the phone with the WBC and more importantly, the IBF and see what Bakram Murtazaliev wouldn't want to do. One thing about the IBF is they will strip your ass. Currently, right now, Brian Castaño don't have no, no, no mandatory. So Castaño... How dare you? Jesus. 
Markeden 123 has just donated $4.99. You sicken me. Salute King, raised fist. They were never gonna let Castagna walk out of their undisputed. Emo he got robbed. I'm rooting for Castagno in the rematch. 75 Castagno. You know what? I was thinking the same thing. And that's fucked up. We got to think that. I was like, yo, this was around like when Charlo started coming back. Maybe round 10, 11 or so. I was like, yo, Castagno is not going to win this belt or he's going to get robbed. That's what I was thinking. But he shit the bed in the last rounds, especially that round number 12. Now, you can tell he didn't want to get knocked out. That's one thing. I'm pulling up the scorecard. You can tell he didn't want to get his ass knocked out. Also, by the way, follow me on Twitter. I'm back on Twitter. It's my third account. I've been suspended fucking four times already. I'm just too hardcore. Just too hardcore. Let's go look at this. So here's what I think. All right. Worst case scenario, they can't have an immediate rematch. Both sides fight their mandatories. Castano doesn't have one right now. Castano's mandatory is going to be either Tim Zhu, Michael Dumed Karbanov, or Liam Smith. Let's look at these first. The first mandatory for Charlo is Bakram Murtazaliev. He was on the undercard untelevised. Erickson Lubin is the WBC mandatory. So in this order, Murtaliev. But Mercedes's got to get his shot before Lubin. The WBA, fuck them, shitty organization. I yes, I respect the super title. I don't respect the underling titles. And Charlo doesn't have a WBA mandatory, and he won't have a WBA mandatory. They just want to keep collecting the money. So unless somebody comes along that would generate more money than Charlo, that wants that belt, then they will order it. But no, they he. So we only have to worry about the IBF. So let's say if Heyman gets on the phone and says, yo, listen, IBF, I know you said he got to fight saying Mortalia, but this is the only time we can get uh, undisputed during this era in the four belt. Hold off. We're going to work on getting Charlo versus Castaño in November or December. And then I'm promising you, Charlo for his homecoming is going to fight Mortalia. And then WBC, you know, by... Um, let's say, for example, Charlo Castaño 2 happens in, in, in November, December. Then that next fight for all of the belts, if there's a clear-cut winner, is going to have to be Mertazalia. So let's say they promise the IBF, like, all right, listen, we'll fight him and we won't vacate. We won't move up. We'll make sure he get a shot. We'll fight him in March or April. Then the winner of that's got to fight, got to fight Lubin. Sometime in the summer, unless they unless they pull the franchise shit, right? Castaño, meanwhile, he don't got no mandatory. He won an IBF eliminator, I mean a WBO eliminator against Liam Smith. But many people felt Liam Smith won that fight. Liam Smith is in talks to fight Tim Zhu. This could be a you know we don't know what's going on with with this situation. So anyway, that's why I said. Tim Zhu, Kurbanov, or Liam Smith, one of them is going to be Castaño's mandatory. And Castaño won't probably have to fight them until the end of the year. So there, there's some room. It all depends on the IBF and what the IBF and he's going to do. That's what it all depends on. If you want to see an immediate rematch. But if there's no immediate rematch, then they both fight their mandatories. Charlo comes back once again. What is it? July, November, December. He fights his IBF mandatory. Boom. He beats uh, Mertazaliev. I'm not really, you know, that's a guy now you need to go watch. If you didn't think that Castagna was going to be able to do what he was going to be able to do, then go watch, watch Mertazaliev. He's not going to be easy, easy, easy job. I didn't get to see his fight today because it was untelevised. Hey, amen, dude. If you want, if you want attention, listen, we're not doing this around here. It's a new day. Where's my moderators? Put this guy on timeout because you're just doing shit for attention. You got my attention now. So listen, we're not fucking around. So anyway, they both fight interim fights, which is their mandatory. And then they fight sometime in April, May of next year. That's the only way it's going to work. Now, who do you feel would have a better chance of adjusting 
in a rematch. Now, if you noticed, let's go look at the scorecards. Charlo, Derek James is right. Charlo was given Castaño the opportunities. Every time he went to the ropes, Castaño started opening up on him, catching him with them left hooks to the body. The only real weapon that Castaño had, you know, when they were, you know, when, when it wasn't on the ropes, was he's got a nice overhand right. And I don't like when people try to say, like, my name, what's up, Terrell, like, you know me. And you even spelt my name wrong. You guys are weird. Well, it is late, so I guess you guys have been drinking. I forgot how much of degenerates you, you, you guys in the chats can be. Like, you guys are weird. Like, I, I keep, see, I'm back full time. You know, like doing a whole YouTube social media thing. And I forgot like how degenerate and weird like YouTube commenters can be. They be having multiple accounts and shit. So anyway, let's look at the scorecards. This is Nelson Vasquez. He's the one with the 117-111. He scored rounds one and two for Charlo. Round three for Castaño. Four, five, six for Charlo. Round seven for Castaño. Round eight for Charlo, round nine for Castaño, round 10, 11, and 12. Now, see, here is where my card comes into question. Because if I didn't see round nine, I got a daughter. She's here now, upstairs. So, you know, I had to go check on her. So that may be the round that may cost on my card because... Uh, Charlo to fight So I told you even in my post fight video Which I do right after I, I was doing other shit during round 9 I was kind of torn But I was like if Charlo won those last 4 rounds Then he won the fight to me In fact let's go back and listen to the scores I don't want to pull up my app And then Let's go back and listen to it The scores being read by the way And take a time out, like the video, subscribe. We're going to be here for another um, about 10 minutes or so. So let's see. Let's go look at this video. Listen to the scores being read. And my thoughts at the time, in fact, we'll pull that up. I'm not reading the chat no more right now. You guys got a super chat. You guys are pissing me off. Y'all don't something Like, you know what? Sometimes you can really, really, really be like, you know, like degenerates. But tonight, you guys are like in rare form. Give, always giving me shit. Here I am covering these fucking fights for you. Just giving me shit all the time. Hold on. I want to see where the cards are read. And we're going to listen to the post-fight interviews. So, yeah, we're going to start here. Now, this is, my, this is my immediate thoughts after the fight. We're not going to listen to the whole video. But in the video is the post-fight interview with both of the fighters and the scores being read. So, this is going to be kind of trippy. We're going to go from live to... Boom. It's going to be kind of trippy. Wait, can we do it this way? Yes, we can. Well, watch the replay. You don't have it. All right. So we're going to let them listen to the cards. So this is my, this is not live. Look at the time right down here. This is when I did the original post-fight video live and in real time. Watch it on Showtime anytime. So let me shut up, listen in, please subscribe, and teach your controversy with 5v360.com. Expect it to be easy. It wasn't supposed to be easy. You didn't want it to be an easy fight for an undisputed at 154, the first ever of the four belt era. Brock Estanio's no joke. And this is one of those type of fights where he rose both fighters, rose to the occasion. See, the pressure, a lot of people felt that J Jamal, I mean, Jamel was going to win. I'm not bad. Both of them in the ring. Hey, let me turn it up. <laughs> Official decision. There's a small contingent of Argentine fans here to support Brian Castaño, of course. Jamel Charlo. But see, here's the thing. I do have to watch it again, and I will watch the replay, even though I have it on DVR. But I want to watch on UFC and the full, full fight press conference. But I wouldn't be surprised if Jamel lost his fight because he was having some issues. 586 punches less than he normally does. He in spots. He was the Brian Castaño that unloads a lot of punches and is effective. In spots, Jamel Charlo was able to throw good power shots. Neither man got it done completely. Castanio was a confident. I like how he would reset. All right. We're about to make history. I like how Castanio would reset. Like, you know, and look out for the uppercut. 
Like, dude, like, listen, Charlo gonna be pissing blood, man. Oh, here we go. Please subscribe. Take your time out. Like the video. We have a split decision. Ooh, well, here are the score expected. totals. Judge of ringside, Steve Weisfeld scores about 114 to 113 in favor of Brian Castaño. Oh, Dominic Castaño probably lost. Judge of ringside, Nelson Ooh. Vasquez sees the action. 117 to 111 for Jermel Charlo. Ooh. And judge at ringside, Tim Cheatham scores the bout. 114 to 114, even a draw. The decision is a split decision draw. Oh, my God. Both I can't really be mad at Didn't I say at the top, barring yes, a draw, and I can't believe we end up with a split draw. There will be no undisputed champion. <laughs> All right, Jason, Martin, have a good night, bro. At 154 and, and pounds. I, you know, really I think in general, nobody should be outraged at this. It was a very close fight, and nobody's happy with the draw. It was a very close fight, and you can't be mad, but I am hurt. Yeah, apparently. Let's go to Jim Gray to try. But the problem is we won't see it again because there's too many mandatories. All right, Moro, thank you. Let's turn it up. Jamel. Listen to the post-fight interview. This was a terrific fight. What is your thought on having a draw? Uh, shout out to San Antonio for coming through, baby. I love y'all. I'll come back to this place. Um... The draw was, you know, what is what I wanted to hear. If anything, I, I won this fight. Uh, I heard him way more than, you know, he did. And uh, Brian Castano is a tough warrior. Sportiels has just donated five dollars. You sicken me. Judge Nelson Vasquez was smoking crack during the fight. Damn, crack though. Thanks for the super chat. Uh, I heard him way more than, you know, he did. And uh, Brian Castano is a tough warrior. You know. He's he going to give a lot of people problems, but like I said, my power is something serious at this weight division. You had him in trouble uh, in the second round and then again in the 10th round. Did you feel as though you had to knock him out because Derek James did tell you in your corner you needed a knockout in the 12th round to win this fight? Yeah, my coach told me I needed a knockout in the ninth round, and I just knew that, uh, you know, he knew what he was talking about. I believe in my coach. And, you know, uh, this is my first time experiencing something like this. So, hey, this come with boxing, baby. Wins, losses, and draws. My lines only still rock with me. Jermel, let me ask you. This, this man threw more punches and connected on more punches than any opponent that you had. Did yeah. you know that coming into the fight, obviously there was going to be continuous pressure. Was it more than you had expected? Well, I know he was a tough warrior. Like I said, I know he, he threw a hell of a lot of punches against almost every opponent he ever fought. So... Um, with my skills and my ability of power, um, I just knew that I could keep him off of, uh, keep him off of me. Um, I feel like I won this fight. Like I said, I deserve to go home as an undisputed. I'm glad to be able to fight on for undisputed title. You know, this is Prada Pierre has just donated five dollars. You sicken me. Charlos jab could have made it an easy night. He made Brian reset every time when the jab was in his face. Charlo has to control the mid range better. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about that. That's ex literally what Derek James was telling him to do. Everything he's doing, you're giving it to him. But yeah, thanks for the super chat. This is different. Not a lot of people in my weight division that's hating. They not even got uh, unified titles. I still holding my titles. Um, shout out to Al Heyman, thank you. I can't wait to get home and be with my baby and my family. Take some time off from boxing. And uh, we'll come back to the drawing boards and see what's popping. And when you look at that drawing board, might you review this fight? And, and it, it seemed from time to time that you were reluctant to throw that right hand. Was that just because there wasn't the opening or is, were you reluctant? He had his guards up pretty high. You know, I, I was moving a little bit, uh, probably not throwing a not active enough. Um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have no excuses for nothing I, that I do. Um, was it frustrating? Was this a frustrating no, fight? Not, not necessarily. I feel like, uh, you know, he's, I, I, I dealt with this in training camp. Uh, with, with my boy Selick. Shout out to UBK. I see y'all, everybody in the building. Hey, I'm happy to go home to, to the H Town and represent again. Um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a one of the fighting prize of Lions only. Uh, and you gonna do this again? Will there be a rematch? I don't know, man. We gotta see what the, Mr. Heyman say. Wait, who says? 
Al, Al, my manager, you hear me? <laughs> Al Heyman. <laughs> well, it seems like there'd be a lot of interest, and it would be for Undisputed to have all four belts. I want that. You know, that's my goal. That's my destiny. We shall, we shall see. Terrific fight. Appreciate it. Thank y'all. Brian. Felix de Jesus. We'll translate. Did he feel as though he won the fight, or does he accept the draw? ¿Tú pensaste que ganaste la pelea o el empate está bien contigo? No, claro. Yo sentí que que la pelea la gané. Eh, nada. Quiero agradecer a Showtime, a Al Heyman, por darme la oportunidad. Y nada. Quiero pedir la revancha inmediatamente porque la pelea sé que la gané yo. Me ha pegado alguna que otra mano que he estado sentido en el, en el round, pero eso no quita que haya ganado la pelea. Eh, le tiré gran cantidad de manos, le conecté grandes manos y Basically, you know, I won the fight. I mean, there were some uh, rounds that he did hit me. There's no doubt about it. He hit me hard. But I won the fight, definitely. I want to thank Showtime Al Heyman for this opportunity. And it was a great fight. You clearly, it seemed to those who were observing and unofficially scoring that you were ahead until the 10th round. And you got into a lot of trouble in that round. What did you feel the fight would go from there having survived that? Did you feel that you just had to survive the extra two rounds, the last two rounds, or did you feel that you lost control of that right there? Mucho pensaba que tú estabas ganando la pelea hasta el décimo round. El décimo round parece que él te conectó bastante. ¿Tú pensaste entonces que ahí tenía que estar más o menos eh, pendiente a que él te hubiese noqueado algo? Sí, obviamente. Eh, la pelea la venía ganando limpiamente yo. Obviamente, como eso dije, me conectó alguna que otra mano en el noveno o el décimo, creo, y estuve sentido todo el round. Y en el otro principio, en el otro round, me conectó alguna que otras manos, pero supe llevarla. Obviamente, eh, nada, peleas son peleas, un gran boxeador, un boxeador fuerte, pero yo tengo lo mío también. Agradezco a San Antonio por el espacio también. No, first of all, I want to thank San Antonio uh, for being here with me. And uh, yes, you were right, uh, Jim, in the 10th round I was hurt. So I was trying to recoup a little bit, also the start of the 11th round. But I did enough to win the fight. Rematch? Would you like a rematch? I hope. I hope this. I hope this, the, re the rematch. I, you know, uh, he's a great fighter, me too. I need the, re the rematch. All right, Brian, congratulations, terrific fight. Thank you so much. All right, we're back live again. That's my post-fight video that I recorded earlier. Uh, let's pull up the scorecard again. Let's see what we got here, this mess. If you guys want to screenshot it or whatever, here, we'll get you the full screen. Oh, that chat's on there. Let's get that off of there. So, yeah, let's go see here. Now, the first Steve, Steve Weisfeld, um, he gave round one, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. And then he gave Castaño a 10, a eight. It was a 10 8 round. Like, they really, like, you know, this is the type of shit that can, like, have fans thinking it's a robbery. Because it's like, really, bro? You gave him a 10-8 round? Like, what the fuck? Like, you know, is that, you know, something's wrong there, right? You, you looking at it? It's like, ah, shit, it's too close. We gotta, you know? Now, that has some, that, that, that right there. That, that, that's some questions. But I do feel that, um, if, I do feel that if Charlo keeps it in the middle of the ring. How dare you? His Grand up. Pierre has just donated two dollars. You sicken me. The rematch him average forty jabs around if him Charlo. Yeah, but will he throw him? Yeah, stay in the middle of the ring. Because there were several times where I thought that like Charlo was gonna go down, like he was taking some mean ass hooks, bro. Them left hooks was 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 stunning him. But after a while, it seems it seems as though up until you know when uh, Castano got hurt in that tenth round, is that he was walking through Charlo punches like he didn't care, and sometimes it was looking like he was baiting him. Yeah, that definitely wasn't a ten eight round. This looks like this judge was trying to find that extra point for him, but he you know like you know shit like that don't make no sense. Now let's go look at the draw the um the draw card with Tim Cheatham. He gave round one to Castaño. Now, that was a swing round. Clearly a swing round, but I gave that round to Charlo. I remember that. He gave rounds one, three, four to Castaño. 
but he didn't give him rounds five and six. So basically, five and six are the biggest rounds of contention on all three judges' scorecards from what I can see, right? Yeah. So, and then he gave the last three rounds, all of them, to Charlo. Which I did as well, but he did give round nine to Castaño. And round nine is my round where I need to go back and watch, and they can decide the fight for me. But this Nelson Vasquez, I don't know what the hell, maybe, you know, oh, Lord, I was going to say some bigot shit. I think, okay, tell me if this is bigotry. No, I'm not going to say it. It probably was bigotry. No, it's not bigotry. I was going to say, because you know I'm half black, half Irish, half Hispanic. So anyway, I was going to say that maybe he went out drinking because it's San Antonio, Nelson Vasquez, Hispanic. You know, so maybe he went out. How dare you? Oh, see, that's a song. Angel I'm not going to say it. has just donated $2. I'm not going to say you it. You sicken me. D. James told Charlo he needed a KO. Why? Oh, shit. That was very blunt and straightforward. All right, Angel. Damn. Well, I guess I got to answer that. Tell us some why. <laughs> well, listen, listen. All right. Maybe, listen, he listen. He was seeing it. No, I can't say it. I just clearly got the sign. I can't say it. Okay, maybe it was too much to contact. You know, maybe like his family was down there, you know, and they all went out, was drinking. It was like, damn, I got a motherfucking cover this fight tonight. You know, but let's all go out and, and drink. Maybe he was out drinking. Because this card don't make no sense. This card don't make no fucking sense. Look at this shit. Look at his card, bro. Screenshot this shit. This shit don't make no sense. No, seriously, yo. I'm, I'm El Negro Chicano. That's the good stuff I heard. Like, seriously, somebody told me I was El Negro Chicano. So that's like me. I'm like the black American Mexican. So on this Nelson Vasquez, he only gave rounds three. Seven and nine to Castanio. Damn. Just so happens says San Antonio above his Hispanic name. And don't help that this How man is. Dare you. Oh, okay, all right. I'm gonna stop. And Lopez right. has just donated four dollars and ninety-nine cents. You sicken me. Why you diss me, bro? Bro, I don't even know you, bro. Where did I miss you? <laughs> I don't even remember what's, I don't know what's going on. I'm so tired. I was at fucking Dave and Buster's today and blow girl running around being a maniac. So I don't know what's going on. So yeah, anyway, yo, stop distracting me. Thanks for the super chat though. We love the money. But uh, we were looking at the scorecards. Oh yeah, my man, Tim cheat him. Tim cheat him. How about that? Conspiracy theories up in this. Tim cheat him. See, it's all, it's all there. Look, Nelson Vasquez just so happens St. Antonio's above his name. The Texan for Charlo, hometown stew, home state stew, right? And then you got Tim cheat him. Hmm. The only one to have some sense was Stephen Wise. Fell. He was the only one to have some sense. The wise one. Yo, this shit was rigged. Now that I think about it. All the stars are aligning. This shit was real. <laughs> he really gave this man 117-111, bro. We didn't get a chance to talk about my man, Roly. How dare you? Prada Pierre has just donated $2. You sicken me. Roly is free lunch to the elite top 10 at 135-140. We got to go listen to Roley interview before we go. Oh, we got to listen to Roley post fight. Yo, I like Roley. I mean, I think I think when the time comes, he's going to get beat the fuck up. I saw him throw this lazy ass jab to Anthony. Can you dig it? You get so let me tell you backstory. I've covered Anthony. Can you dig it? You get before when he got beat up by Ivan Baranchek. I think he got his eye busted open or busted up like real big in the World Boxing Super Series. Some random, it was a random card. It was like a midday card. You know me covering God knows whatever boxing. So I was watching the World Boxing Super Series. So I'm familiar with Anthony. Can you dig it? Yidget. To be honest, 
if I had did covered the weigh in yesterday, I would have probably said, yo, you get got a chance against Ruli Romero, that Ruli guy. But anyway, let's go listen to the post fight. Yo, I, it's something about that Ruli guy, yo. Like, he got the ultimate troll face, and he talked like a troll, kind of. Like, like he just talked so much shit. I love it. I love it. I love it. But yeah, he threw this lazy ass jab to the stomach. I was like, yo. And if he did that shit with Tank Davis, he would be uppercut at this fucking smithereens. But listen, but go ahead, young man. Talk that sass. Mama, there goes that man. You go ahead, Roly. Talk that shit. Fuck it. I'm going to cover his fights. You see, I covered this shit tonight. Roly is must see TV. It's polarizing. Let's go listen to his post fight interview. Right flush, right in the chin. We came into this fight with four knockdowns from left to right flush, right in the Hey. I'll cut this shit off. You make sure you like this video and subscribe. T Street is not up at no two o'clock in the morning. Make sure you like the video and follow me on Twitter at T Street Contra. And also, I'm back on Instagram. It's T Street Controversy. The chin. But like the video. I don't play around. I'll, I'll know who didn't like the video. We came into this fight with four knockdowns from left hooks and three from right hands in the recent fights. And he kind of mixed this one up, too, with a knockdown uh, from the right hand. And then the second one with the left hook, which was a very powerful uh, punch. And he kind of guided them down. With the yeah, I don't know how I feel about Rose. It's a gentle guiding down of uh, Yigan. He's a heel, not a baby face. <laughs> uh, Anthony, can you dig it, Yigit? Yigit. I covered him in the uh, World Boxing Super Series. He was a late step in to face Roly Romero, WBA interim champion at 135 pounds. Now, very polarizing figure in the boxing community right now. Rolando, Roly Romero, uh, Mayweather Promotions TMT fighter, now at 14 and 0 with. Yeah, what is that face he be making? It's always like a like a scowl. It's not a scowl. Not this one. He looks How like this dare one. You. Prada Pierre has just donated two dollars. You sicken me. Roly is so robotic and slow just to see fighter. Yeah, I will put him at a C. But like he don't look like this now with this this innocent sweet kid that plays Super Nintendo, got all the games. Now he just look like I don't know. Like he just always I'ma let him I'm let me shut up, let him talk. 12 KOs and don't let it fool you with the resume. But let's listen in. I'm interested in this post fight interview. I'm T Street Controversy with Fight Almost stops the contest. He is the winner by way of technical knockout. He is still undefeated and still the interim WBA lightweight champion, Rolando. Roly. All right, the last time I'm going to interrupt, if at the very beginning of this stream, like when this stream first starts, is that Roley's guy's post-fight press conference, he was talking all this shit. Like, he was talking about how he going to knock out Tank Davis. He said he won Devin Haney, and Devin Haney couldn't survive Linares. Like, so if you want to see that, all you got to do is rewind to the very beginning of this video. I may even play it. No, we're running out of time. We might go two hours. Let's see. Let's listen to this first. Let's listen to this first. He's play it by ear. Romero! Seven round TKO. So it was supposed to be Austin Dulay and Roly Romero, but Anthony Yigit stepped in. By the way, he weighed in, what was it? Um, damn near five pounds over the 135 pound limit. So I'm sure he lost a uh, shit ton of money. Let's listen to the post fight interview and talk about the 135 pound division. Oh, thank you very much. What do you think of the reaction to your fight here this evening? I fought a tough dude, man. I fought a dude that wasn't my weight class. I fought a 140-pounder, and I fucking stopped him. Simple as that. 
how would you fight this? How would you describe the style of this fight? It seemed like it, it was pretty awkward and, and very difficult for the referee. Man, I'll tell you, man, European fighters are always awkward for everybody, man. They got a completely different style over there than over here. The power that you're able to display um, and the abilities that you have, let's take a look at that fifth round uh, knockdown. This was after you were penalized for being uh, throwing elbows and so forth. This is the last round, I'm sorry. Tell us what was going on from your vantage point. Well, it was a beautiful right hand. It was a nice short one, like a like six inch point, like a Bruce Lee shot. You went over to him after the fight. Let's take a look, I guess, at the end of the fight um, and describe to us, Roly, what was happening here. Did you know it was over at this point? Yeah, at that point, I knew it was over. I swear I thought it was over the first time, you know, but, I mean, I, I didn't have no time to stop him in that last round. It cut you short. Can you dig it? Dig it? But after I dropped on that first time, I knew it was going to be over soon. Were you concerned when the point was deducted from you? No, I was winning the fight. I was winning the fight. I mean, shoot. I mean, points get deducted from everybody. What do you want to do next? I want Javante Davis. A 140. You really think you're ready for that? Yes, I want my 140. What, why do you think you're ready for that after 13 fights? I mean, what, he got at 16, no? I have 14 now. So I'm ready for it. Time to stop him. I'm going to knock him out. You think it's realistic? I know it is. I know, I know what he can do, but I know what I can do. I'm a lot stronger. Well, that may give us something to look forward to. Congratulations on this fight. I hope so. Let's see if we can make it happen. All right. You heard that, Mo. Back to you. My man, Steve Gray, like, are you sure about that? You, 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 you sure about that? Listen, I like I like Roley. You know, I mean, he, he, he's got the spunk, but... You don't got the skill. I don't think my man gonna make it. I don't think my man gonna make it. So this is what we're gonna go do. As I told you, I got a lot of things going on. Um, we are gonna be working with the WBC channel. Yes, the WBC is launching a 24-hour boxing channel. Our content. How dare you? Is gonna. Oh, somebody got Prada there. Pierre has you just donated to two dollars. Prada, you sicken me. I call him robotic Roly. Robot. He's so telegraphed. Hey, thank you for that. Yeah, he's going to get knocked out in the noise he's be making. Yeah! Yeah! Every time he throw a punch. Um, so, yeah, WBC's launching the channel. T-Street's had a lot of opportunities over the years that he's turned down or, like, dodged and ducked this when he's not. So, as you can see, over the last couple of weeks, video quality and, you know, been stepping up a little bit. Stream frequency has been stepping up and... You know, it's going to be really, really, really busy around here. Um, podcast is finally on the way. You know, still fine-tuning some things. And um, also, my other channel, T-Street Uncut, it's fully partnered, monetized. You should go check it out. I'm going to be putting some content on there that's long overdue. This week was supposed to be Fury versus Wilder. Three... And, well, I'm really upset, and I'm going to make sure that this week I'm going to give Tyson Fury hell because, listen, I think it's all bullshit. I don't really think it's him. I think it's, in, I think it's between top rank and maybe MTK, you know, like the real big wigs. It's like, yo, this fight is not selling, and we're the A-side promoter this time, you know, for this third fight. Let's just pull, you know, everything back. Pull a segment on how the belts are going to be. I don't know. Like, I don't know really. Like, I'm still getting all the details. But one thing for sure is T Street's going to be able to say he's working with the WBC. So I'm taking it very, very, very seriously. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a huge opportunity. You know, so this is not something you fuck around with, you dig? So that's is why I'm really, really, like, if you notice, I've been really getting everything, like, taken care of um, on the channel. So, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's some big shit going on. And, and I was told that I can keep my same content. Of course, we got to, you know, um, tone things down because sometimes my shows can be rated X for YouTube. I'm talking about barely on that line, you know, where YouTube is like, yo, like going to shut you down. You got to calm this shit down. So, 
you know, my content is still going to be rated R, rated for mature, but there's certain things we can't say. You know, we're not going to be able to do. Not shilling. I'm not saying we're going to be shilling. Maybe we might shill a little bit, just a little teaspoon of shilling. But for the most part, we get to keep things the same, just more professional, more structured. And also, you know, interviews and shit. So, yeah, Fury vs. Wilder 3 is going to take place October the 9th. Everything's still the same. Undercard's still the same. Hellenius vs. Kwanowski 2. Uh, F.A. Jagua vs. Frank Sanchez. Gerald Big Baby Anderson vs. Vladimir Tishkin. forgot the guy's name. PBC on Fox and ESPN Plus pay-per-view. Both Wilder and Fury said to make $20 million plus each at least. Now, I don't know the exact numbers. I think it's like 28 and something like that. But Tyson Fury gets the bigger split. I think. I don't remember. I don't remember the details. Don't get me to making shit up. But I believe for the I believe the second fight, they split 50-50. And then the third fight, it's like the winner. I, I'm pretty sure the winner get the bigger share and it's Tyson Fury. And this week, we do got Joe Joyce versus Carlos Takam. Not really looking forward to that, but, you know, I'm going to watch it. And for the most part, the rest of this month is pretty dry. Things don't really pick back up in boxing until uh, Rigondeaux versus Casemiro. Ooh. And then the winner of that is going to likely fight the winner of Donaire versus um, um, Enoye too. Can you imagine in, in some type of, like, weird scenario if Rigo beats Casemiro? And then Donaire beats Inouye. We get the rematch of Rigondeaux versus Donaire for Undisputed. Can you imagine that? Think about what I'm saying here for the ones who follow the 118. By the way, both of them at their age are now at a weight division lower. They both fought at 122. Now they're fighting at 118. And now they're both competing at 118 and could possibly be fighting for undisputed at 118 at their age. Crazy shit. And you know, Rigo, he Cuban. And you know, no, I'm not going to say it. I was going to say another off color joke that some may. I don't want to get canceled. This cancel con. I don't want to get canceled. Okay, can I say it? All right, I'm going to say it. Listen, but it's kind of true. It's not, it's not a lie. So. And I talked about it before. Like, when you come from Cuba, okay, say, for example, if I was, you know, El Cubano. So, once again, I'm half black, half Irish, hell, El Chicano, El Negro, Mexicano. So, if I was Cuban, right, let's say, for example, right now I'm 37. Let's say if I was a Cuban and I want to escape to freedom to America, go down to Miami, and I get on the boat, I sneak out of Cuba, get on the boat. I don't have no social security number. I don't have no birth certificate. I don't got shit. So what can happen is I can be like, what? I'm leaving this country. Fuck everything. I'm going to America. I'm 19 now. What you going to say? You ain't going to say that. You don't know 19. So them guys like Iris Lindy Laura, he's been around since I was a kid, since I was a wee boy. So don't believe that Iris Lindy Laura is only like 37. He's at least 45 now. Rigondeaux is like fucking 46. Don't get me started on Luis Ortiz. When the last time you saw him? Did you notice he don't grow a beard? Because he don't want the gray stubble to show. You see what I'm saying? So Rigo, Rigo at his age, I was at Rigo last fight too. He was looking washed and he was like cussing out the fans and shit. You know, Rigo at his age, for him to be moving down to 118 pounds, even though he was always considered a small 122 pounder, still, nonetheless, that's an achievement. There's still four pounds you got to drop, you know? Same thing for Donaire. I never thought he'd be the hang moving back down to 118. The Cuban baseball players are reported to get false AC. I didn't know that. See? Fab Castro, what is wrong with you? Ew, they age better than you. You put it in caps. You've been trying, you've been trying to so you were you was typing in regular font, and now you put it in caps. You got my attention. You guys are girls tonight. Why y'all can't just take a joke? Jesus. Y'all, what is wrong with you people, man? Calm down. Go get some pussy. 
Like, you guys are so uptight. Calm down. Go get some menudo or something. Go get a cheeseburger. What's your comfort food? Giving me shit. I'm here 3 o'clock in the morning covering these fights for you guys. And y'all giving me shit. With that being said, I'm out of here. You guys don't deserve me, man. I'll see you guys next week. By the way, Canelo's fight should, not should, it could be announced this week. You know, will it be Canelo versus Plant? Will it be Canelo versus Golovkin? Will it be Canelo versus Bivol? Bert to BF? Murata? Would it be somebody secret like they did with Amir Khan? Some secret shit? Hmm? We'll see. T-Street Controversy. We're fighting.